right, YouTube. I'm gonna show you something that I've been uh, wanting to show you for a while, but we haven't had a job that lined up just perfect for it. If you guys saw my short from a couple days ago, you know that Eric sold like seven pool kits while I was in Alabama, and now we're uh, basically out of ICF, but I got a whole semi coming later today to solve that issue. But I just loaded up every corner I had left. Um, and we got Keith and Ben over here uh, cutting out subfloor. The, uh, the element job, the homeowner, and the boss of the job, he uh, made an audible yesterday. Let me see if I can walk down here without busting my tail. It just got done raining. But um, this was gonna be a board form wall here, retaining wall between the pool, and the pool house was gonna have a board form foundation, and then go to, uh, it was gonna go to wood frame, stick frame, but, he made the decision yesterday to just go ICF everywhere. And uh, the boys are putting the rim board on as we speak. And um, what you can't see here is, you can see one right there, but they've, uh, right there, they're cutting out a window every 32 inches that is um, basically behind the eye joists or behind the joist hangers. And then we will drill and put an anchor bolt in every one of those. And so right now, this subfloor is just gonna hang on empty forms and we're gonna go up nine more feet. And so we'll have 13, 14 feet of pour we're doing next Tuesday. And uh, you can do this on a crawl space. You can come up to the crawl height and install the floor. Normally, if it was any bigger than this, I joist will span this with no, no support, but normally you'd go ahead and pour your piers when you pour your footings. So you do like a monolithic uh, pier pad uh, with Joey stuff. And then uh, you'd have your piers running, but all of it is gonna be hanging on empty forms. People think that sounds crazy, but it's actually super solid and it will completely square the building. The building will be totally tight and square because um, we'll be as square as the Advantech is when we put it on. So as soon as the Advantech's on, we're gonna foam the, uh, the bottom of the wall. We're gonna run all of my pool plumbing on through the bottom of the wall there. And uh, we won't be able to top out today because I ran out of ICF, but we do have a semi coming later today, so we'll top out Monday poor Tuesday and uh, I'll have to get all this backfill done real quick for uh, rental it training the following week because this pool is part of the rental it training event we're gonna be installing the membrane at training and I'd like to put a tent over it because we just had the rainiest uh, April on record and um, I'm going to assume that it'd be my luck if I don't put the tent over it that we will get rain so all of our hydronic everything's got to run into the room and um, we're gonna get all that handled here today and be ready to uh, get as high as we can today so it, Monday's an easy day, getting ready. Okay guys, we are a couple days later in the process. I wanna get as detailed as I can after the floor framing. But we had an absolute stupid mistake. Um, my, my main Amish crew is off right now. They are building one of their own homes uh, as, they, as, the, as the young ones get married, they'll take off and, uh, and then they'll build their farm. And when they do, I lose my crew for about four weeks. I'm on my fourth one uh, in the last eight years. So it's not a super common thing, but it does happen. Um, but anyway, we're gonna be pouring this morning. Show you uh, kind of everything going on here. We've got the wall topped out. In the front here, it's a little over 15 feet high, I think maybe close to 16 to the, um, the subfloor is up here. And uh, we still gotta foam it down. And we gotta cut the back side uh, with the slope. It's got a, about a 16 inch slope. It's gonna be a pretty flat roof. And it's going to just cantilever out about 10 feet, maybe 12 to about here to give uh, part of the uh, pool deck some shade until uh, early afternoon. So that's the goal. I've got to take all my pool plumbing and uh, light plumbing into the crawl space where it will come up in the back of the room over here and uh, be accessible underneath. So I will be able to organize this pool room fantastic. Now to the mistake. My Amish guy that's still working, he's uh, kind of new to us, but I mean, he is not new to construction. He's been on an apartment crew, building apartments for 15, 16 years. Um, we still got to get all the zaunts up, but 
we let him set the laser. And I probably should have double checked it. My foreman should have definitely double checked it. But he set this entire floor, which right now is just hanging on the hollow forms. He set it nine inches too low. I have no idea why, have no idea how, but he, he did. And he woke up Friday after work and realized what he had done. Didn't tell anybody, just fretted all weekend, which I'm, I'm happy that he had, you know, a conscience about it and it bothered him because it, it should have. But uh, <laughs> he came in Monday, yesterday, and I was up on the boom lift setting uh, some of the tops of the walls. And he informed me that he was pretty sure there was a problem. He got the laser out and checked it and confirmed. And after about 10 minutes of um, me being a little apoplectic about it, uh, I told him I already had a solution. I just got to be mad for a minute. And basically, because of the way we're doing this, we have anchors all the way around here, cut windows into the ICF, and we put tar paper in, and we put a bolt through the rim board. Now, those aren't doing anything until after we pour concrete. So right now, this entire floor is just hanging on ICF screws, which is fine for temporary. We're not putting a lot of load on it right now. And we went in and put cribbing under this whole floor around the perimeter down to the footing. We took every screw out. So this floor is just completely loose. And we have a couple pneumatic jacks we use to level floors when we're working on old houses. And we put one under each end, the, the, rim, the joists are running this way. So we put one under here, we put one on the other side. And in unison, we just lifted the thing up nine inches. It took a couple hours. It was, uh, it was actually remarkably smooth, but it did kind of set us back. We would have easily had all the bracing done today. And now we still have to uh, put all the bracing up. We have a bonding inspection here in a little bit on the retaining wall portion out here because it's within five feet of the pool. So all the rebar in those wall, that wall and the wall over there has to be bonded and inspected. We pour this here in about four hours and uh, should work out great, but just kind of kind of a funny, funny little aside of things that can happen that are just nonsensical, but they happen and you got to deal with them. And uh, I would have never ever thought my guys would m miss miss just so bad and that they would build the entire thing that low it's supposed to basically be on plane with the uh, pool deck and nobody noticed it the whole time the, and i even me there's a, i'll show you i'll go in the crawl in a sec the crawl door is right under here and we're thinking we're gonna have a door we can almost walk through like four feet tall probably and uh when, when they cut it out it was right up almost to the joist and i'm like that's not as tall as i thought it would be but i didn't double check and stuff happens it, it, it's it's done it's fixed so Easy peasy. We'll, uh, my, my excavator is gonna come over here and backfill all this. We're gonna run all the hydronic piping, all of the pipe in again. I have two waterfall lines that run right through here that still have to be put in. And uh, my bubblers and my, my lights over there. All that's gotta come in today. My excavator is gonna come in and backfill all this soon, like in the next couple days. Won't be a much, we won't compact anything up against this wall. But that allows me to set my big tent over the 20 by 40 pool so that we can next week weld the renolate membrane in for training. So I'll take you under real quick and that'll be it for the video. Um, I'll show you the pour and then, you know, we'll, uh, we'll be on training next week for renolate. And uh, then we have a pool training in a couple weeks and uh, we're getting ready to kick off summer guys. If you're doing it with a whole house guys, obviously you're gonna have spans that iJoyce can't do. So you're gonna have piers. Um, the way we do that is we go ahead and pour our piers when we pour our footings. And then we make our, we wrap the ends of all of our beams and we just stick them straight into the ICF. And then we put temporary support running down the wall to the footing. So that's kind of how we do that. So you've got your entire girder system under the floor is basically done. And then you put your joists in, you hang it on the wall with ICF screws. Um, you know, you've just got, ICF screws hanging it all the way around, you know, like a bunch of them. And uh, it's, it's quite comfortable to walk on. It doesn't feel flimsy and uh, works out great. So um, if you're in a crawl space kind of market, this is a great way to go because, you know, the day after you pour your walls, you pull your bracing and you're building walls and ceilings. It's uh, incredibly quick and it doesn't require you to stop and pour at crawl height. 
which um, works out great. My very, very first ICF project about 12 years ago, um, we did it this way and we've done it this way ever since. All right, guys, so we had a successful pour. I just met my Mason out here because uh, he's gonna help us. We have a training coming up and we've been putting the used stucco on the walls over here and uh, we are just uh, short on time, short on guys right now. And um, we've got a brand new crew of ICF installers starting with us, but uh, they have not started yet. So we've got some big growth things happening, but everything is uh, happens in its own time. So right now we're just trying to fill it in. But as you can see, we did get this poured a couple days ago. My boys came in and got the zonts and the zuckles off the walls. They haven't cleaned it up uh, completely yet because I had them on new stucco. Um, some, some of my high dollar pool equipment has already come in here. I got the rest of it sitting outside. I'm gonna go ahead and hang the I-5 panel. Seems funny since there's no roof, but my Amish are off, off work for a few weeks. And this stuff's all made to be outdoors anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and hang it, get power to it, and um, go, go ahead and weld in our Renolit membrane. Uh, cool, cool thing is uh, Aquamatic has promised to expedite our um, auto cover so that it is actually ready for install in our June pool training. I think the first uh, Thursday in June, we start a pool training and um, we are going to install this cover. We obviously show off our little baby pool with an Aquamatic Auto Cover, but we'll install this, we'll install the sensor, um, hopefully get it done completely and show you guys how we program the I-5 to turn the chlorine generator down and lock out all the waterfalls and other things so you can't pump water on top of the cover. Basically idiot proofing um, auto cover. So yeah, guys, obviously, I mean, this is a pretty cool way to go. You frame the floor while you're building the ICF. And then when you pour the very next day, you, I mean, you could be setting walls and ceilings. Um, I've always found it to be the most efficient way if you have a crawl space uh, to do it. Just send a guy under uh, the crawl the next day to tighten up the anchor bolts and you are off to the races. So anyway, pretty cool, cool thing. This uh, element thing, we poured uh, about 15 feet, almost 16 feet at this side here, all in, uh, all in one go round. I actually couldn't see what I was doing. And in the second pass, I got it all the way up here, which was about 12 foot deep. And in about the first 20 minutes of the pour, I only did that on this side, kind of puckered me a little bit, but uh, nothing happened. It held up really good. These element blocks are fantastic. So. Without further ado, I'm gonna let you guys go for the week and uh, I'll try to bring you back here, show you the equipment set up, bring you a lot of cool training videos in the near future and uh, I'll also get you guys an update on the Element house build over here. And uh, really, I wanna start showing off these uh, European triple glaze windows. I'll do a deep dive into these windows. We do sell them now, we are importing them from uh, Poland and Germany. They are the best windows in the world, guys. And they're not priced like the best windows in the world. They are very reasonable. And if you're going to go as far as building an ICF house all the way to the roof line, um, it's silly not to at least look at them and get a quote. You can hit us up at support at all3pools.com. Patrick actually lives in Warsaw, Poland, so that's uh, pretty helpful for us. Um, and guys, I mean, it's, it's part of the envelope that matters. Um, the windows are always the weakest link in your efficiency. So being able to get something that is a higher efficiency, I mean, these windows, the glass, the triple glazed glass is probably, you know, that thick in these windows and you just cannot get that out of double pane, no matter how good they are, Pella, Anderson, Sierra Pacific, none of them do triple glaze like this and it's so good. But anyway, guys, I got to go back to the warehouse and uh, spend the entire day building stations for rental it training. Uh, we got to get the world ready for that great membrane. And um, I will see you next week.